So now let's go to the EPDM and we'll see what are the different uh, options we have got in the vault. You could see now here I've got different folder structures where analysis, engineering, which caters for different organizations, I mean to say the departments inside the same. You could see that I, I can see over the different design data what we have got and this is the product called Radiator Core Builder and these are all the relevant CAD files it has got inside. The screen is now pointing towards the different preview. Say for example, if I'm going to select the particular component, I could see the preview over here itself directly inside the vault without opening the actual CAD file itself. Along with that, you could see the different users who have been checked out the respective files and now probably you could see the motor which I have taken and relevant to that, this is the main assembly upon which I have to work upon. Since it is a previous project which we have worked for one of our client and we have got all the data along with the BOM, contents, where it's been used, who are the persons who have worked upon the previous project, who is the line manager for that, what is the workflow, all piece of information can be obtained in that. Let's have a look into how we can open the file through a vault inside SOLIDWORKS by adding a EPDM as an add-on product upon SOLIDWORKS license. This is what the assembly we were talking about. It is called by the name Radiator Core Builder Machine, one of its kind in automation machinery and look at the product. This is the structural design which we need to change for our current project. Have a look into this. Since it is a previous project which we have taken, hence you could see the old version file and let's have a look into how we can check in this particular file. Once if we have checked in the file, it will get into the vault which is a common storage location for all design engineers across different departments in the organization. I can have a comment over there saying that this design has to be changed for the current project where rest of the components seems to be okay. So I'll just check in the one. Once the file has been checked in, you could see there, is, there will be an appendment to the revision number and also the version control what we have defined which is automatically decided by the software EPDM and also where it's been used here also we get a quick icon in the right pane of the SOLIDWORKS window so that you need not to have a separate window for EPDM to be used. Since it is an integrated version of SOLIDWORKS licensing part and hence the reason you could make use of inside SOLIDWORKS itself. Let's quickly get into a new part creation as we all know that we need to create a new structural design for this part. SOLIDWORKS being a easy to use tool which is uh, globally accepted by the world of community used by the SOLIDWORKS users. You can see that I have just taken the length over there and now we have an option to make use of a di dimensions over there itself. Let's make one more line where 634 as a dimension given which is parallelly and dynamically updated into the my sketch level. Let me have this around 715 and I'll just make use of a mouse gestures and have one more line of same as 634. It's quite easy for me to have a relations as well because it's all a shortcut menu which automatically pops up irrespective of the different commands and the position where we are working on the cat. Let me maintain uh, one more dimension given to this and I'm just thinking of to fix it where I'm just selecting these two entities and automatically shortcut menu pop ups and I could see I can give a relation over there. So once the relation has been defined, let me constrain completely by adding relations and dimensions to this sketch. As you can observe, I'm not searching for any of the command. I'm just selecting the entities and automatically you could see the shortcut menu pop ups for me. I'm just making use of these options to ensure my sketch is fully defined. Rest I would say add few other dimensions to ensure the sketch is completely defined in terms of its state of sketch. You could see the change, state of change of a sketch has been changed to fully defined now. I'm done with the sketch level so let me uh, exit the sketch mode. 
SolidWorks has got a powerful well-meant design structures where you could automatically and directly include uh, different structural members inside a 2D sketch. Not only 2D sketch, the same features is also extended for 3D sketch option also. If you are good enough in making use of the 3D sketch option in a structural way, creating a skeleton of a structure, you could still doable inside SolidWorks well-meant using a 3D sketch option. Let me create few other groups and say okay to this option yes i'm done with the structural member over here next is i just need to add few of the end caps and other features for this wellman's design to get completed let me go to over this and you could see this is what the structural which i've designed for and let me create a plane which is mid plane option between these two faces I'm just thinking of creating a plane and all I need to do here is just select the two end faces and automatically you could see a plane created over there. Exactly in mid of the two faces which I've selected for. Similarly, let me add another plane which is in mid of those two faces which I've selected for. Okay, so now the planes are done. Let me go for the shortcut again, just right click upon the feature or icon, you could see the shortcuts over there, make use of it and then let me have the plane, let me make it high and let me create a line over now, adding it to about and then creating uh, one more line. As I told you that even though if you are not aware of any CAD users inside SOLIDWORKS, you could still start up using uh, your own 3D CAD as SOLIDWORKS is the first among them and still you could create your design at ease of use. Reason being simple, SOLIDWORKS software always focuses on design or your innovative thinking then you know, how do I create these options inside SOLIDWORKS. I'm just going to add just convert entities so that it will be the sketch will be converted onto the another plane without having much rework done on creating these two sketches. Let me add another structural member over these two and creating a new group and then adding another two again. That's it. I am just done with the structural member adding to these. Now let me add an end cap. It's an again easy to use tool inside SOLIDWORKS where I could see that I'm just creating a one more plane with a offset of 40 mm and let me go for a sketch upon the plane which I've created for. I'm just using the mouse gestures where I could just easily access the sketch commands without searching for those commands where it, is, where it will be. Let me create these lines and uh, add upon one more okay i'm done with the number of lines added to this plane let me keep on adding few other sketches and ensure this is i'm just thinking of to add a dimension over these two say about 270 let me make these two to be horizontal enough in terms of relation given. Let me repeat the same over here and exit the sketch more. Now I will be adding few more structures on, onto the complete wellman design here. You could see I am just making use of another piece of sketch where I could add a structural member, a different group that leads to a different cut list or a different group of the multi bodies used inside the wellmans because these are all having different sizes. As I said to you that, I'm just going to add an end cap over here by changing what is the thickness I need to maintain and then the positioning of this particular end cap inside or let me have a chamfer distance given provided for that. Let me select the other faces where it has to create an end cap for me. Okay, it's done. So a simple structural design is created over here and let me add a color to this. 
Reason being simple, I just need to ensure I could create a simple photorealistic effect given to the model so that the same model can be even used for the across the organization for presentation purpose. So my design is done. Let me save this and then I'm just going to rename uh, since it's going to be added on to my vault, which is a new design created. Let me save it as Domino's Base 1.2. Let me save this. Now the complete file will be checked and you could see I've got a data card here, which will be appended by this. And let me have a part number, unique part number given for this new design and say this is my first vision. And automatically you can see the description has been added over to the data card, which will be taken from the information of SOLIDWORKS meta properties. Let me go back to the EPDM onto my right pane and I could say this is a new design which I have created for this project and it's been added. Once the project or the part whatever I've created has been added, I'm just going to think of adding few more sketches upon this to complete the complete design of the development design here. Let me add a piece of rectangle and then giving a collinear distance between those two. And again, one more collinear relation over here. So once if I've defined and let me add a dimension of say 90, same over here. How about if I think of adding a piece of solid uh, information over here again. Let me extrude this and add a piece of plate with a thickness of 14 mm as per the design. And I'm going to say yes. You could see that automatically the revision is also appended. As and when the new design is changed, the version number will be automatically updated through EPDM into the vault. Vault is the common storage location where I'll be adding all my design into that through a channel which I've already explained in terms of a flowchart which has been created among the different users in line to the manager as well as management to see the complete systematic flow of the design across the organization. Let me continue my sketching over here and then adding a line with a 10 mm distance and then let me add one more center line. I'm going to create a new design without uh, searching for a commands. That is the beauty of the software which, which already we have been observing. Let me make use of uh, dimension to dimension this and say about 600 uh, 680. Okay. Let me go for this. Adding a one more dimension I'm just thinking of but let me go back to the exit mode of a sketch and then not really let me add a center line one more center line has been added onto the right of my origin let me create a piece of rectangle sketch The reason being why I am just going to create uh, these piece of information step by step precisely is the same thing will be used even for configuration where at the later stage of my design it will be easy for me to ensure or to configure the features separately without changing most of the parameters and also the sequence of the different features created and not affecting the parent child relationship between the features and creating a conflict among them. Let me add another dimension of 100 and then say make it equal to 440 or add one more dimension over here. 
basically the sketching as well as the dimension relations definition depends upon the design intent of your product as far as this product concern i'm going to have the different dimensions for each as it's been changing across different project as well as the assemblies to be used let me add to this and then change it uh, if i could see the boss extrusion which i've created for and now let me extrude the boss adding a material to this and say okay adding one more piece of sketch I'm gonna have another sketch done over here okay adding a dimension to this let me say to have a distance between these two say about 33 to ensure that the complete design is fully defined adding the next piece of information the cut extrude I'm going to add to make sure this is used for sliding options where the rail guards will be slided onto this slot cutting slot similarly I'm going to make one more sketch onto the structural member upon this side having rectangle drawn and then dimensioning it with reference to the existing edges as a reference to my dimension scheme okay so keep on adding different features to ensure that the complete part design is done before my manager approves the same and creating a drawing out of it Let me add the dimensions over here and then adding another piece of information. The beauty of the trim option to be used here is I'm just going to ensure the structural members are trimmed by using a end miter condition on butt condition or miter flange condition over here. Let me have a miter type of weldments created and then let me add a gusset which is a kind of a rib that adds a strength to the structure I can fine tune these values in terms of the direction adding a material over direction 1 and direction 2 let me say 75 and to be equal and let me make use of the triangular type of gussets to be used here selecting another two faces and then adding a few more gussets onto the other structural member which acts as a supporting member let me select these two okay last but not the least I would say let me add a well with a bead of 1.5 mm radius and let me gonna say to be stitch welded by having a staggered length to add a strength a stitch weld which is commonly called you could see the annotations and which has been used that depends upon the definition of those weld beads again let me make use of another type of weld bead and create a stitch weld again similarly I'll be keep on adding welds across the gusset as well as the structural member and staggering each stitch well for strengthening purpose it's quite easy and simple for me to add a well bead just by selecting the two interconnecting faces or mutually perpendicular one where I could just create a simple well over here
adding another one and you could see how easily and most often these are all the well beats that doesn't add an extra feature to my part thereby not increasing the overall file size of the part again and these are all which are virtually available and let me rebuild the whole thing now my complete wellman structural design is over let me gonna create a drawing out of it say make drawing from the part and let me make use of the different templates available as far as this project goes in let me make use of the drawing template which is the default one you could see the creation of drawing as simple as this automatically I can see the different standard views available onto my task pane over to my right area of the GUI and automatically the different dimensions have been added to the different views let me project an isometric view over to it and then changing the display state of uh, the view again you could see that the complete dimensions and the views seems to be cumbersome which is automatically rearranged by the software in a single click I could see the dimensions for a particular view has been rearranged on its own systematically let me demonstrate you once again and this is how it is I would just say auto arrange the dimensions over to the view let me have a well table along with the well cut list because most of the well design comes along with the cut list table or the part list which we would call by the general name let me add a well-meant cut list table over here which gives that complete description of the, the types and the quantity which have been used, the description, the different types of structural members which I have considered, the length as well. All the piece of information used for each structural member is available as a well-meant cut list for you. Let me add auto ballooning for this and this can be arranged in a predefined fashion provided as a different pattern type for the ballooning layout let me ensure for this particular view I'm just going to add the different ballooning items as well as the cut list has been added for this but let me have another piece of table which gives the complete information of wells which have been used you could see that I have appended another table called the well table which gives me the information on well size, symbol, the length of the well has been used and the quantity that is the number of wells have been used in this particular part designing. In order to easily communicate this complete design to my manager or even to the other engineer or my one of my colleague the easy to use tool is uh, e-drawing so let me gonna add a write-up saying that if the same thing has been used by one of my manager says that change the rip thickness I would say so this is the watermark which I'm gonna add and even I can have an approved or confidential or the different types of stamps available for this design I'm just going to show you the a piece of information and a small example of how a communication tool called e-drawings will be useful without actually printing it onto a hard copy or a piece of paper thereby ensuring uh, you know something a step towards a greener process let me come back to the SOLIDWORKS and you would see that I have got this design but if I, if I want to change the views over here I can change it to say 395 
and then automatically once if I go back to my part the complete dimension has been changed. You could see the associativity between the part and the drawing. As of when the design changes happens, you need not to always open the part and then do the complete design change. Simply you can just make use of the part drawing and open the relevant part drawing and you can change the dimensions over the drawing itself so that it will automatically get updated even in a part level as well. Nonetheless, the same associativity holds good between the part, assembly and drawing mutually together. I am going to show you another beautiful option called an isometric sectional view and that is how you can see the complete visualization of a view in terms of a 3D could be possible. Most often in most of the uh, automation industry the main concern is to know the center of mass which directly implies the imbalance force acting upon the system. To ensure that there will be no imbalancing force acting upon it. So we would like to have the center of mass location onto the drawing which gives a piece of information about where exactly the center of mass is located for a product and thereby even we can say the reference of that can be located along with the other existing edges as well as. So once if I have the complete part is done let me take back to the assembly mode where I just need to add into my assembly. You could see make use of I can just go for the display stage so that I can just concentrate onto my design where I need to assemble this part onto the sub-assembly level. All I can say is just insert the component. Here I can just quickly filter out the part, assembly, drawing or top level components easily without taking much time and let me have bring the new design which just now created onto my assembly mode. I'll just make use of few of the advanced mates called the wet mat option so that I can centralize the new weldments onto the existing assembly to see whether it fits into this or not. It's good enough. Let me have another concentric mate added onto this. All I need to just select the two circular or cylindrical faces between the two components where I need to ensure the concentricity, concentricity is defined. Or else I can just make use of a smart mates, just drag and drop onto the cylindrical faces you could see, a preview over there that is a concentricity mate has been added onto this. If this is what we are looking for, say okay to that. Let me add a parallel mate onto the faces of these two components. Since this is a design which will be used frequently on other assemblies as well, I can just drag and drop from the design library and just ensure the complete mating is done on its own. Let me have the leg pads just drag and drop from the design library again because of the way how it has been created using the smart mates and smart references I can just go for it. Having a different views creation is much more simpler now. Let me make a assembly drawing out of it and you can see the center of mass has been appended even onto my the different drawing views which has been customized template and all the drawings have been created on its own along with the relative positions of different views. Let me add a reference dimension from the edges and the center of mass where I could calculate or have a distance of measurement between the different entities selected. Let me create a auto ballooning for this. It's quite simple and then magnetic lines helps me out in properly placing these balloon items without a much jigs and much exercise required to do this. In terms of the productivity usage of the assembly drawing detailing is much more enhanced and it's been quite easier in SOLIDWORKS drawing module. All I can just do is ensure it's been properly placed by just dragging the magnetic lines uh, through which the complete ballooning has been attached and let me have a bill of material I would say for this particular assembly. I can just automatically add a bill of material which takes care of the part number everywhere. And now so once the complete assembly has been done I can just go for I will just show you a few of the other options what we have got in the assembly. Say since it has been a huge machinery and maintaining the different components, different assembly levels and parts quite 
difficult and hence the reason SOLIDWORKS has got a new capability called a large design review. You could see that I've got a lot of files to be opened and all I would say just open the top level component you could see the resolved lightweight large design review and large assembly board and the configuration has got two again. I could just select whether to load the hidden components or not which will quickly open up the huge assembly in no time. You could see that I'm just going to open the complete top level assembly in a less time by making use of a large assembly mode. Oops, you could see a, a great mark saying that it is overweighted because I have added a sensor. In most often the overweight or the optimization of the weight is a critical concern in, more, in this kind of design. And hence, let me make use of the other parts which is not of my interest and hence envelope it. So once if it is enveloped, you could see the change or the mass property has been upgraded to less than 4000 kg below. And hence, I could see the sensor has been given a nice notification for me. Let me add, uh, make a one more large design review which I was talking about and making use of a search option, sensor system options and then change this to 800 and then 200 so that any components more than this will automatically switch over to the relevant mode either large assembly mode or large design review let me say automatically load the lightweight components so that it will the performance will be tweaked up yes but still in the large design review i could just say go for the sectional views where i could just measure the overall assembly along with the different structures enabled so that the space volume or the volume constraints is one of the critical uh, key elements to be selected for. I'm just checking the whether it's been properly uh, formulated as well as the space constraint has been taken care or not by measuring it and then ensuring all my design along with the extra peripheral outfits is in line and into the space allocated for this kind of machine to be implemented on the shop floor. These are all the uh, measurement history which allows me to have a complete track of the different things. Being a manager, the manager logs in and then the next task would be design validation and you just say to append these values to me saying that so a manager gonna give a message to the user saying that and you being a user I'm just updating it and I got this message that I need to do the validation of these many products. Let me reply to him saying that it will be done once the complete task is completed. Being a uh, manager has given a certain task to the user like to, to do the validation of these many components and let me get into the vault again so that I could just ensure these components have been checked out into my vicinity of working. I just need to work upon the one of the sub assembly where the self weight of the component is one of the key concern. The design has been given and it is being submitted for the analysis purpose. Validate the design is the comment given from the manager so that this assembly has to be analyzed before the final approval is done. So, being a FEA engineer, Kiran D will apply, will get into the, his own and you could see the different uh, EPDM notifications what you can look for it and then now he will just ensure the pending in his analysis. Analysis is pending, so let me check out this complete sub assembly now. Once the complete sub assembly is checked out, you could see now I can just go for adding the simulation over here. This is what the structure I've taken and it's been simplified by using a different configurations and all I need to do is simulate this using a static study. Assembly simplification is one of the pre-processing stage what we carry out. Let me say it is a structural strength and say okay for this static study creation. Once the study is created, all I need to do here is just append the different materials and for the simplification part of it again let me exclude these from analysis as I'm going to take care of the beams uh, where the joints will be defined in the fixtures 
let me apply a material of uh, ASI 1020 steel uh, which is a steel cold rod usually used for this kind of uh, structural design once the complete metal has been ap appeared where you can see the different mechanical properties of that relevant material has been taken care of the software again which has been built in the material database of SOLIDWORKS let me edit the different joints and recalculate again so okay and all I need to just ensure the fixture is appended to this assembly let me add the fixtures on these four locations which been resting or the complete it's been rested upon the floor then once the fixture has been defined it's all a right click business over here where I can just ensure the force is applied onto these different beams three beams selected let me have a reference where I could see the load has been applied perpendicular to this beam with 1000 Newton value on each structural member say okay for this so once it is done I would say just to create the mesh okay and let me fine-tune the mesh options and go for the curvature based and fine-tune again to have a better accuracy and a much more good result and the curvature one so the complete meshing is done software is so intuitive that automatically it will take care of the meshing as well as the solution solver time so now once the complete solution is done let me stabilize the complete model by using a soft spring okay and then let me run the analysis so the analysis is going on now so once the analysis is run let me see the different results overall criteria here is I just need to ensure this design has to be optimized in terms of weight in terms of material but still having a factor of safety around acceptable range or the value okay so the analysis is going on where I could see the calculation is done simulating any product inside solidworks simulation doesn't have any compatibility issues is one of the major advantage as it can read the data directly from SOLIDWORKS CAD since I've used uh, okay I could see the one stress which is not the relevant one since the beams has been used here so let me edit the definition and then select the beam and then let me have the Newtons or let me have Newton per mm square and then go for having a upper bound in direction 1 the stress values say okay to this and I could see the maximum stress is around 10 MPa let me see the another stress plot in the direction 2 to check for the maximum stress seen on this complete structure because of the self weight of the machine components say okay for this it's it's around 10 point or 11 MPa let me look for the displacement plot let me have a true scale defined it, these are all the exaggerated plot again let me change the value to mm again it gives me a plenty of options to have the different units and multiple options to be selected as per my requirement let me go for and you can see it is around 0.9 mm is what the deflection I could see on those two structural member how about the factor of safety defining for this assembly and uh, say ok for this the factor of safety seems to be around 6 so it is pretty over design I could say for this reason I just need to ensure how about if I check a design inside plot let me go for that having a design inside plot which gives me the area where it's been overloaded the region where the load has been taken maximized you could see that these are all the areas it's been loaded to the high level but rest of the things it are, it's of no use because there I could see there is no load being taken by these components so how about if I change my design but before that let me go for adding a trend setting so that this study creates a baseline to compare with the other studies 
along with the design changes concern. Let me set it as a baseline. It will capture all the studies and relevant plots calculated and then set it as a baseline to compare with the further studies which will be carried out with other parameters changed. Let me go back to my model again where I could see the design changes is being done at the assembly level without entering into the part. All I can do is how about if I remove this particular member you could see. Now the member has been removed. Oops, the structural strength has to be changed. So let me apply a plain carbon steel as a material which is uh, easily available but less costlier than the previous one selected and it is easily accessible along the vicinity of my area. Let me update all the components before rerun the analysis along with the joint definition updated and recalculated again. Okay, it's been recalculated and then let me run the analysis. The complete meshing is going on. SolidWorks simulation software quickly analyze, do the analysis for most of your components without much time as you can see the seamless integrity between the CAD and CA platform together. So the analysis is going on for the second study created where I have, have removed one of the structural member but still and also change the material and let me look for the result how it's been changed by comparing using a trend tracker you can see that the mass is being 218 kg which has been reduced to 204 kg and of course also the displacement which was 0.9 mm but now it is 0.6 mm simply better the better design which we have got and you could see that the mass has been reduced from the previous study created and of course the stress has been taken care in terms of direction 2 where you could see the relevant change or decrement in the stress value as well along with the displacement concern. But since the metal has been changed and the removal of the member has yielded a better result than the previous one. SolidWorks seamlessly integrates and do the simulation for most of your products irrespective of sheet metal, surface, solid body or even structural elements. Let me do the optimization for this where I just need to select the different variables of the parameters. I could say the structural thickness is one of my keen area and material is the second one. I could define say the mass or the factor of safety where I need to maintain the constraints. Let me have not uh, say greater than 2 or 3. Okay, uh, let me go for the 1. 1 is almost the same, so let me multiply it by 2. This is quite safer enough, which is not, which ensures that it, it is not over design. Let me apply a material for this, where I am selecting a plain carbon steel and then let me define a range of thickness so that it should not cross beyond the maximum value of 4 mm defined. Okay, and the goal is to ensure minimize the mass. That means the overall weight of the component or the structure has to be reduced. So, the design study is going to calculate and optimize my overall design in terms of the thickness defined material and factor of safety but still giving me the overall weight which is reduced than the previous existing design. You could see that it has yielded me a better result giving me the different options and scenarios. I could see that the minimum factor of safety has been reduced from 5 to 4 and the mass has been changed around from 20 kg to 17 kg. I could see about 3 kg decrement in the overall mass but still maintaining the structural thickness, material and factor of safety of 2 enough. So instead of saying it is over designed, I would say it's been optimized now. Let me check out or I would say check in saying that please review my design. 
where Vinay being a manager enters into the vault again to see the different cases and he has just passed the validation done. Great, awesome validation or design. Another engineer called Srinivas Lu, which I have explained in the flowchart, will enter into the his own portal using a EPDM login data. And he'll be doing a separate analysis in parallel to Kiran, where he could just say submit for the analysis required. And similarly, this component has to be validated in terms of design as it's been changed. And the inbox will be appended saying that the pending analysis is given again for the user called Kiran where you could see that he can check out the relevant examples and the assembly files. So what is the main concern here? I just need to ensure what is the behavior of the beam or the sagging effect of a beam because of the self weight or of the overhanging structure. Let me say the distance low to be carried out here and all I could define the joints since I have taken care of defining a material at the part level itself the complete has been transferred onto the simulation as well. Let me ensure these bottom paths have been fixed and let me add a remote load. Instead of having a complete component where the computational time is more I can reduce it by minimizing the number of components to be taken care because of the number of elements and also the computational time which is directly dependent upon the number of components selected and hence I am going to minimize it by having a simplified design but still having the same effect of the in terms of loading and fixtures and the effect of it. Let me define the load of a structure or a bracket or a whole assembly which has been pivoted or mounted on these faces on the beam structure. Let me have a self weight of about uh, 260 Newton defined, 260 Newton defined and uh, let me have a force added onto this. So once the force has been given, you could see the preview of the different parameters which we have defined. Then we go back since the computational time is more for this. So I'll just switch back to the results which I have plotted here and I could see the stress value generated for this analysis. And in terms of displacement, I could see the maximum displacement has been seen at the tip of the beam and it's about you could see the displacement. So once the design analysis is done, I'm just going to ensure that this is not safe enough, but still the complete motion is being taken care. So I'll be considering this assembly, whereas I just need to ensure not only the sagging effect along with the bracket also, because this is the bracket which will be transferred or reciprocating over the complete railing uh, with so and so cycles defined. So let me define a new simulation study called fatigue. So I have just taken a new simulation study over here where all these have been imported from the motion loads. Because of the motion of this particular component over number of cycles over a definite period, all these loads have been imported from the motion study and let me define a fixture for this, how it's been held in the entire assembly position level and then defining a force. Let me have a force of 3000 Newton acting upon this plus adding a self weight upon this face with the reference plane selected and then say about 300 Newton defined. Say okay to this. Nonetheless, the metal has been defined. All the critical inputs have been imported and let me run the analysis for this.
So once the analysis is done, you could see the stress developed because of the force calculated from the motion analysis where I could see the factor of safety, displacement and the stress value and how it behaves at during the motion time. Now let me define the fatigue and going to have a fatigue check plot for say about 10 million cycles. Let me see the damage and the end of life for this. You could see that the fatigue check has been done for this analysis where I'll be going for a fatigue study defined for this with a transient mode selected and I would say loading has been taken by adding an event with about 10 million cycles in general. The overall idea here is to just see how long the design will sustain the load without having a failure. Let me have a SN curve defined for this complete material concern and let me run the analysis for the fatigue check. So the results are done. Let me go back to the life of this component under repetitive load. You could see the damage percent is almost hardly 0.01%. So end of life cycle as well as the percent damage is less. Hence the design is safe enough under the fatigue or the repetitive load. Let me go back to the motion to see how the stresses have been occurred onto the beam because of the motion and also the self weight of the components hailing onto the rails. For this you need to make sure the add-in of a motion simulation is been selected whereas I'll be just ensuring the motion simulation has been selected for this and then applying a contacts to define a 3D contacts how the components have been held together at the assembly level and also during motion to check for interference, collision detection, dynamic collision through the motion options. I'm going to define the contacts over here and then applying a motor with a linear type and ensuring the distance to be traveled say about 2000 over the railings. Let me add a force, the self weight of the structure and then calculate the force and the reaction force onto the bracket in terms of the magnitude and these are all the faces selected for this. Let me have the concentricity made selected. You could see that these are all the reaction force upon the bracket. Because of the stress induced due to motion, let me go back to the simulation so that all I need to check what is the stress accumulated over the beam or the railing part. Let me define the mesh density and then add a time to take care of from 0 to 5 seconds of time. Because of the movement of the structure onto the railing, we are concerned to see the deflection or the sagging effect of the beam because of the motion and the stress induced during the motion along with the reaction force. Let me calculate the simulation results now. You could see the stress developed. And the stress develop is around 57 MPa, which is less than the yield strength. However, the displacement is about 6 into 10 raised to 7 meter, which comes to around 0.06 mm roughly. And this is the factor of safety. And the displacement 
over the railing because of the motion and the self weight. So what next? All we need to insert this complete take care of the motion loads and then do the analysis upon the structure. SOLIDWORKS is a nice integrity has got between the simulation and the motion simulation so that it can take care of all the forces and loads applied during the motion and then import the same onto the design. You could see the maximum one which is developed is about 80 MPa upon the structure because of these motion loads which have been imported from the motion analysis created. And seems to be safe enough. Let me handle the flow simulation where all I need to ensure what could be the behavior of flow inside of air inside the cylinder and also the force acting upon the piston which in turn converts this into a linear displacement. Let me add in the flow simulation and then run the wizard. It's quite simple and easy to use tool and very much intuitive. It's all self-explanatory. Let me define a new configuration with a project name created for this and go for the unit systems by default. Ensure it's an internal type selected along with the gravitational effect to be considered. Exclude the unnecessary space inside this. Let me add the air as my basic fluid upon which I'm considering the analysis to be done. Go with the default options and then say finish of this. You can see once if it is done, a new project has been created where I need to ensure the proper boundary condition has to be defined. Let me add a boundary condition of say a pressure, a total pressure of about 7 bar applied inside which is a pressurized air that pushes and pulls the piston which converts into a linear motion and thereby controlling the motion in the transfer structural system. Let me define the goal to know the force, the maximum force acting upon the piston through which I could calculate the linear displacement it moves for and thereby selecting a proper motor along with the proper wattage instead of going for a blind options and a blind selection of motor. Let me run the analysis. So once the analysis is done, it's going to be calculated all the results and you could see the solver is finished. Let me go for the inserting a plot and let me define a sectional plot upon a right plane where the pressure is my concern. You could see how the pressure varies and that's how once the pressure has been accelerated it's been diminished away from the cylinder. Let me have a velocity is about 39 meter per second is the maximum. In terms of turbulency, you could see the more turbulence created at the inlet of the boundary conditions defined. So a proper orifice has to be defined for this motor. Let me see the flow trajectory and see the behavior of the flow of air inside the pneumatic system. Okay, that's how the air has been impinging a force upon the piston area. Let me go for a different mode of presentation showing you the spherical one and let me define the goals. You can see the maximum value is about 472 Newton is what the force developed upon this. This is what the maximum force exerted by a pneumatic system where you could see the pressurized air at 7 bar exerting a force on a piston. And these are all the plots how it's been taken care extrapolating these results. Coming back to this 
all my design validation is done so let me check in these designs and asking for the review please review the validation say okay so the complete set of simulation files which have been checked out has been again put back onto the wall asking for the review where a uh, manager gets a notification that it's been performed and few of the analysis and the rest of the progress is still there and it passes the test so manager appreciate the work and say by saying it's a good work done how about the communicating the complete tools so let me go back to the 3d by composer where i could see the complete set of information taken on to the 3d by composer irrespectively and not disturbing the actual cat files so these are all the different views which has been taken care and this is what the fin tube radiator core you are seeing here this is the explored view of this it has got uh, multiple steps you can see here these are all the steps created and this is the assembly which has been imported from the solidworks cat file without wasting one of the license to do the peripheral work like technical documentation which is a cubism process through a solidworks you could see there are four steps defined so let me add few of the steps and let me demonstrate you how these can be done so easily using a 3d by composer i'm going to demonstrate you the dismantling process of this subunit by having a different steps demonstrating the different images which will be taken on to the output file formats let me just uh, make sure it's been uh, taken to the hidden mode where all my concern is about the four cylindrical rods and it has to be pushed away so let me do that you can have a proper selection by making use of a selection sets taken from the geometry again and you could see now the whole lot of complete set of components have been selected and then dragged upon a certain level the same can be made much more informative by adding a collaborator where i just add an arrow actor over here you could change the definition of this by tweaking the properties of each actor or the collaborator selected let me have opacity maintained about 160 and stay on top to be enabled and of course the end condition has been changed either to start end or both side or the none let me go for the one which is required for this kind of steps to be created let me change the width to 40 and the properties of the collaborator actor has been appended okay this seems to be done so let me create a new view and then say this step 5 let me add the same thing step 5 okay okay it's done let me go back to the assembly and look at the different styles of the modes of presentations available if you go back to the assembly mode you could see another video format is adding a animation to your piece of product information available have a look into this example i'm going to create a digger tool which gives you a piece of information on to the intricate details available inside an assembly i can zoom in zoom out to properly locate on to the focused area and i can change the radius of the digger tool let me have the selection on to the concerned region where i need to emphasize this particular component at the assembly level i can peel off the irrelevant piece of information from the digger image and then okay let me add a tool tip by changing the properties of this tool tip say go with the gradient tool type and then change the font size to 15 okay let me say this is my the main uh, fin tube radiator core an actual uh, output of uh, this rcb 
okay just update the view and that's how let me create a cover image required for the marketing collaterals adding a high resolution pixels without uh, compromising in terms of the vector line and the quality of the image I could create a beautiful cover image required for the marketing collaterals let me change the background by tweaking the parameters and the properties of different collaborative actors selected and then let me do a shadowing part and then creating a high resolution image for this by adding a occlusion let me have anti-aliasing which takes care of the fine edges to be uh, seen fine enough let me give a name as uh, I'll say uh, cover image for marketing cover image for marketing okay that's great we'll save with this and that's how the marketing collateral image will look like this information using 3 way composer even you can create a product information say for example the huge missionary how it works like let me show you how easily we can add animations using uh, proper keys with a nice interactive user interface seen at the below let me run the analysis I mean to see the animation of this which is partially built and let me complete the whole set of animation by adding few more keys and few more steps of motion added onto the animation creating a nice video output which is used to know how this machine works it's a product information purpose instead of putting onto a conventional 2d platform i could just create a simple 3d video like this using a 3d by composer which is now called solidworks composer i'm going to add the digger tool where it has to be fade out so let me add a digger change property and you could always fine tune by just Holding the timeline bar and then reversing the keys. I'm just going to add the complete subassembly to be moved from the position onto the job along with the collaborative arrow mark. Say about for the next, uh, say about four seconds, around four seconds. I need to ensure the complete subassembly has been moved from the destiny or the location 1 to the location 2 in a span of 4 seconds time. Selecting the whole set of assembly is quite simple in 3D by Composer irrespective of how the parent-child configuration or the conflicts in the nature or the native cat file. Let me reset the locations and then let me have a piece of sub assembly into this to be moved on to the co-builder let me add another positional key and then relook for to enhance to ensure it's properly done for the better narration we can add a collaborative actors for this And let me tune, fine tune or tweak the values here and that's how it's been created you could see the different file formats along with a password protected to have uh, encrypted or authenticated users to be used this is one of the file output from 3d way composer or solidworks composer where you could just made it much more interactive player in terms of .exe file format i could just run or take you through the different views created which is an interactive mode where the user can stop play pause rewind orient the model return the model have a digger locations change the few of the actors properties still doable which is a much more interactive player available for the user to have a more piece of information at his comfortable range delighting him by giving a much more high qualified uh, complete information of a product in terms of a 3d video made using 
reusing the uh, CAD data. That's how you could see uh, one of the file format called 3D by Composer Player, which you can completely a whole set of information about the product can be sent across to the customer. You could see the different views available for you to go for it. And that's how the FinTube Radiator Core is created for you with this piece of information done. Even this can be taken on to the HTML file format where you could see how easily we can create or make use of or put on to the website. Most often these kind of HTML file formats will be used or added onto the website in order to have a pre-launching of the product to have a more market space. And this is a 3D PDF where you can append for the different one. So the complete uh, properties done where I'll be taking for the electrical systems to be done. I could see here a simple electrical system can be doable inside SOLIDWORKS by making use of a product called a SOLIDWORKS electrical where it has got a whole lot of information like uh, PD data available, uh, different properties to be used and a database which is you can access over thousands of information which is readily available and that's how schematically you can create a whole set of information using this. I'm going to add a multiple uh, drawer and you could see this is what the electrical SOLIDWORKS user interface will look like and I'm going to add the wires over here so that in my machine I need to ensure the complete set of motion mechanism and the properties of different components, machine components precise movement has to be completely controlled and programmed using a PLC system. So to design a complete PLC system for uh, automation machinery like RCB, we're going to make use of a SOLIDWORKS electrical tool where you could design a complete your electrical system in a much more easier way. I'm going to insert few of the symbols. and then dig out whole piece of information so that the complete 2D schematic of the electrical wiring, harnessing, how this has to be routed between the electrical components on electrical system, having a complete set of information in detail, component level onto the 2D schematic. I could just append by adding all the electrical components in route to the wiring done between them. I'm going to add another component where editing the simple properties over the same. And you could see how the manufacturer path selection is done by selecting the number, part, description and the manufacturer say Legrand over here and the different class of properties available and the type. What is the circuit to be selected, terminal, library, everything will be selected and if I want to add on my own, just say add on to this. All this database has been customized as per the company's recommendation and the standards follow. You can see now the complete set of symbol properties have been added on to this and then now going for the next set of information. SOLIDWORKS Electrical makes the job of an electrical engineer much more easier by having a complete 2D schematic done using a SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2D and then appending the same into the 3D platform where you could detail all piece of electrical connections, information, different electrical components used in route to the electrical system and completely having the database of different materials used, all piece of information extrapolated onto the single platform. I'm going to say adding the manufacturer's path selections over here, adding 
the uh, location where it has to be along with the emphasis selected with the different parameters evaluated and let me add the symbols over here where I'm going to make use of the circuit and this can be the symbols can be oriented changed customized as per our requirement let me add another piece of information over here So once it's been added, you could see that I can change the macros of these or even can be drag and drop from the properties onto the schematic diagram. And you could see that's how it's been developed and let me have the location of the outline to draw and select the different locations and of course the outline created for the location selections done let me insert a terminals where i could see the different terminals properties can be mapped using a database again i could see a whole piece of information have been added using a 2D electrical systems, a SOLIDWORKS electrical 2D, I can just, the ease of use has been extended over here also and let me have an associative cable course. What are the different wires, cables to be used along with the color, type, origin, description and how it's been assigned, associative cable course have been taken care. That's how different wires have been assigned for this cable core. And let me add few more controls. Let me add a power parameter onto the book where you could see the company terminal strip editor and let me have the drawing settings for this adding the terminal. And I can just make use of the terminal strips to be selected for different cables and these insert several terminals onto this. SOLIDWORKS Electrical will take care of the properties at the back end and that's how you could create it over here. Let me insert the terminals and then I just roll back to a few of the options to show you how easily we can create another piece of information over here. Just have a multiple insertion or a single insertion and connect or interconnect between the two controls, I mean the power and the control and that's how you can interconnect between the two as shown. Additionally speaking, SOLIDWORKS Electrical will make use of most of the options available so that you can just route and all you have to just pick and place most of the databases available from the electrical module. And let me go back to the relevant position. I could say I have added a 16 volts ampere where 230 or 12 plus 24 volts of parameters has been selected over here with the motor selected and once it's been completely done let me go back to the 3D of electrical where I could see the complete system has been inserted onto the cabin let me insert one more electrical system and let me add the code for the same. Let me insert it once again. Clamping onto this and then having 
one more terminals to be inserted all the piece of information is created using electrical 2d and then these piece of information can be directly added on to the 3d using solidworks electrical 3d as well where you could just add all piece of electrical information onto the cabin created and just located onto the side of your rcb machine you could see that how easily we can insert it all the components and this is how it's been the complete set of files have been routed